Uh, my question is, is addressed to Katriana Inglesby. Now, I know that, that people in the United States have quite a problem differentiating between Northern Ireland and Ireland. So I'm going to just talk about them as being one thing, okay, for a moment. I heard uh, recently that over the last 20 to 25 years, uh, the ANC in South Africa consulted with the peacemaking forces in Northern Ireland uh, to, on nonviolence. I've heard recently that now the peacemaking forces in Northern Ireland are consulting with Hamas on the same subject. Now, have you ever heard of anything like that? And if you haven't, I would challenge you to go back to Ireland and ask about it, because it's something that the United States can't find to do easily. <laughs> I'm afraid to be, to be very honest, I, I genuinely just don't know, but I mean, I do know that from our own experience in Northern Ireland, um, for many years there were back channels of communication and it was a very important part of the peace process um, that certain people took risks and spoke to people that other people did not wish to speak to at, at various times. Um, but I really, I, I can't say anything about the, um, about Hamas. I genuinely, I, ju I just don't know. Um, I don't work in that division in our in our department that deals with um, the anger relations, as we call them. So I, I'm sorry, I, I just genuinely have no idea. Thank you. Uh, I do want to say that uh, the fact of peace in Ireland, however fragile, and tentative is one of those astonishing things that's a beacon to the world because for decades that was a symbol of an intractable problem. And if the Irish, who uh, enjoy a fight more than anything else, except maybe a Guinness, can find peace, then maybe there's hope for the rest of us. I think that there was a question here. I was going to um, ask you for a direct question, but I think I'll put this out to the entire panel. I think one of the issues that we have today is a, we are more and more globalized and interactive, all the countries, is that we face issues such as pandemics that we are facing now. And I was just interested in finding out because these type of health issues are becoming more and more global because of the interaction by about the global communities. And I was just curious as to you know, what efforts your countries, from your perspective, are doing in that role of keeping the world stabilized from a health perspective so that the governments can stay on track. Any of our payroll like to pick that up? <laughs> Maybe I would just uh, add one thing because I was going to talk about it in my uh, speech, but I, I didn't arrive at the fact that uh, one of the times when we actually uh, have news about the United States when we're talking about H1N1 because we are having quite uh, big problems because of this, there's quite a controversy over the issue because uh, the government is basically forcing uh, some doctors uh, to, to give this uh, vaccination, although many doctors don't agree with the necessity of this. So there's a, a debate going on whether this is a real issue and a real danger, or is it more about business and uh, generating panic? And uh, this is something that uh, is challenging. I have quite a few doctors in my family who, who are on the side that uh, this is uh, quite an artificial issue and, and it should be questioned why, is it, why it became so big. Why now? Uh, and uh, about the manufacturing of these vaccinations, it's quite a big controversial so in, in Hungary. So I don't know, I think it's a very complicated thing and, and uh, many times we have to be careful with the media because 
because of the same thing. We, we many times just tend to, to give uh, the same news about it and we don't even challenge people to think about the background of things. So uh, this is just a personal uh, view and uh, just to, to tell you that uh, this is a very big debate in Hungary and it's an everyday issue, it's an everyday news and uh, the government is trying to solve the issue, uh, of course, and, and it's trying to, to, to prevent a, a big uh, pandemic, but uh, I think uh, there's more into it to think about. Something you wanted to say something? <laughs> <laughs> Serbia, after so many things that we've been through, became kind of resistant, resistant to any kind of threat. So maybe this is uh, one positive thing. But uh, <laughs> our government is taking uh, this issue very, very seriously. Uh, yesterday, uh, the Ministry of Health started preparing our hospitals, started preparing as many beds as, as uh, possible for isolation of those people. Uh, our problem is that uh, this economic crisis uh, had a huge impact on our country, so it will be probably uh, more difficult for us to deal with this. Uh, but this is another example for our people, maybe for those uh, political forces in, in Serbia that do not understand the importance integration, why we need to integrate because allies have helped each other on every every front. And I will uh, just mention something as an example that is not related to the issue of health. It is the issue of energy security, an example of how, uh, 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 how much being integrated means. Uh, Serbia was, uh, in, uh, was impacted very strongly uh, last winter because of the cut in gas supplies. Uh, and we have received help from Hungary because Serbia is supported by Hungary in its uh, uh, EU aspirations. And Serbia helped Bosnia and Herzegovina afterwards also. So this is, this is the, way, the way I see it. Maybe this will help something positive and something dangerous. <coughs>